If you've ever been interested in plant medicine and how it can help you on your spiritual path, this is the episode for you. And you might wonder, what does psychedelics have to do with angels and herpes? Find out more as we explore pollinating the planet with love with the flower whisperer, Beth Bell. Join us to find out more. You're invited, delighted to discover who you are. Anything is possible if you believe. So join us on this beautiful journey. So let the show. So let the show. Before we start this episode, I, Carrie Hummingbird, and I, Akeem Sami, want you to know that. You are invited. You're invited to, to join, join Soul Nectar, Nectar Tribe. Tribe. If you like what you hear on Soul Nectar Show, you will love being in person with us in Soul Nectar Tribe. We invite you to check it out. First 30 days is free. Right now, go to carryhummingbird.com, K E R R I, hummingbird.com forward slash membership, and sign up. We'll We'll see see you at at our our next next tribe gathering. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is greater than us, to the big mystery beyond the veil, to those synchronistic moments that lead us inexorably towards a deeper understanding of ourselves and who we are and what we're doing here on earth. And the more that we, that we peel back the layers, the more we discover who we really are in truth. And then we get the next layer of truth and the next layer of truth. And I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and I'm in it for the great spiral. You know, I'm in it for all the way down to the bottom of the barrel and all the way up to the highest place I can go inside of myself and in this world. I'm here for the evolution of consciousness. I'm here for the great awakening. And I know that if you're listening to this, so are you, because that's who you are. That's who we are. That's what we're here for. And, you know, at this time on the planet, there's just so much being revealed so much that we are, we're being asked to stop averting our eyes and we're being asked to look directly at the things, the things that our ancestors had a hard time admitting, the things that were not forgiven, the things that People didn't want to know about themselves, but actually are really true. And we need to face those things within ourselves and in our ancestry and heal. So it's a time of great healing. And of course, at a time of great healing, we get lots of tools. We get lots of tools and practices to help us on that journey, because whatever journey we're supposed to take, we always have exactly the right medicine to do that. And so today we're going to have a really awesome conversation about seemingly unrelated topics, but completely related. And the title, of course, if you've been listening, uh, checked out this episode is Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics. And I chose that title because this is the title of the book that my friend Beth Bell wrote, and she is here with us today. And you, you guys, yeah, here's her book, Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics, Unraveling the Mind to Unveil Illusions. And I asked her when I was, she was telling me the book, I was like, is it illusions or delusions? <laughs> but <laughs> probably some of both. <laughs> so Beth, welcome back. I mean, you came, you came on the show years ago and I'll, I'll remind everybody who Beth is in just a second, but Beth came on a, years ago. I don't even know how long back it was, but you were doing another beautiful project. And now you're back with this awesome book that's doing quite well. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm so excited to be back on the show. And I, I don't remember the topic that we had last time, but I know one thing that it was all about the mission of pollinating the planet with love because it still is. Um, and I'm just so excited to be here with you today. Yeah, it was pollinating the planet with love. So mm-hmm. rising star sales executive turned marketing executive. Beth Bell spent more than 16 years leading strategic brand planning, and more for the pharmaceutical industry. And I know that we've talked before, Beth, about the pharmaceutical stuff. So the last episode, you guys, I'll put a link in the show notes. Check that out if you want to hear our conversation about that. But, you know, somewhere between all those meetings, Beth began to live more, listen more closely to the world around and within. And she actually started 
taking lots of pictures of flowers. And so if you listen to that interview, you'll see that um, you'll hear those messages about the flowers and how they woke her up. So flowers are powerful medicine, people. I mean, get some agua parita, start blowing some prayers in there and smell that stuff. You see what I'm talking about. <laughs> so <laughs> Beth is just doing beautiful work in the world. She's pollinating the planet with love. And she's also the flower whisperer, as I said. So she's uh, forged new paths. She's done lots of beautiful work in Bali, um, a beautiful entrepreneur designing silver jewelry. I've seen that. It's really gorgeous. You should check it out. She's also a radio TV show host herself. She's an author. As I said, this is her new book, Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics, Unraveling the Mind to Unveil Illusions. And she is now also, which is super, super cool to me. I'm really excited to get into this topic. She is an advisor for CEOs and psychedelic pharmaceutical companies. I've actually been doing a lot of research into this um, pharmaceutical psychedelics, as they're calling it, and the the um, the work that they're doing, resuming the work that was done in the late 50s, 60s. Now they're resuming it now. So it's kind of cool to see that opening back up again, hopefully in a new, more responsible way. So Beth, tell us, like, gosh, since we last talked to you, so much has been going on in your life. So much. Yes. It's never a dull moment. And I'm super excited to have this book out. You know, spirit said to me, you need to write a book about all the stories of your life. And I said, yeah, no. <laughs> and spirit said, yeah, yes. And I said, well, I always wanted to write the book of like, you know, the five pearls, the the 10 tips, the three, this, the, you know, the, the wisdom book. And spirit said, yeah, you need to write about your life and all the stumbles, all the successes, all the stuff. And so I fought for a little while. Um, and then eventually I heard the voice loud and clear, actually in the rocking chair just behind me. And uh, Spirit said, go get your pencil and your white notebook. And so I did. And I outlined at the time it was 12 chapters and now it's 22 uh, within an hour. And I was like, I guess I'm writing this book. And so that's how it started. I, I actually had quite a bit of resistance to the idea of putting out all of my personal stories. Yeah, I I know that journey. Um, that was my first task from spirit when I woke up was to put all my sensitive journey with sex addiction and herpes and um, just so many um, dark nights of the soul in the book Awakening to Me. And yeah, when you get that call, it's it's like, you know, you can say no, but you really can't. It's like one of those. It's the choiceless choice. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was happy to do it. Once I got through the initial resistance, I was very happy to do it. And it's been an incredible journey along the way, because as you know, you get tested every step along the way, how committed you are to your own purpose um, on you know this earth plane in this lifetime. And, and sometimes that journey is not easy. And it's one of the reasons why I really wrote the book is to help other people. It's, it's an awakening memoir. It's not so much about sharing my stories as it is connecting through our stories as you do on the show so eloquently that when we share what we've been through with others, sometimes we can inspire others. Sometimes we can help others to maybe not step in the same landmines or get through them faster. Not that fast is important because we're always here to get the lesson, right? So it's, it's about really getting the lessons in life and awakening, expanding our consciousness and yeah, growing in such exponential ways so that we can help humanity also heal and awaken just by being who we really are. Yeah. And as I've talked to my mom about this, you know, because I put that book out and she was like, I can't believe you just put that book out that was just for you. And I was like, no, mom, it's not. And my son even was like, everyone's really upset, mom. You should just write that for yourself and not anybody else. And it's like, then my mom did a bunch of research on generation. She's like, oh, your generation is like all about airing the dirty laundry. Like every person in your generation just wants to tell everybody everything that's going on. And I'm like, yes, yeah, because we've had how many thousands of years of being silenced. And then when you're silenced and isolated and separated, and you're punished in private, you think that you're the only one that's being treated that way or going through that thing. But when you start to share your stories with others and they, they see themselves in your experience, all of a sudden people go, oh my God, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. That's why we do what we do, right, Beth? 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I knew from the get-go writing this book that that it was all about connecting with others because I wasn't alone. Like I I knew that absolutely without a doubt. And that was, I think the big like passion in my belly was to help other people realize that they're not alone, which is what you're just saying. You know, it's really about just getting into community and blowing up, you know, the stuff that happens to us. I mean, there's three main, there's lots of goals of the book, but I would say the three main goals of the book is to help inspire others to take responsibility for their own life, right? None of us are victims here. We are we are co-creating this lifetime. And the sooner we get the lessons, the sooner we can move on to the next lesson and the next one. Um, and the second one is to really work through all the trauma that gets created through all of our life experiences and blow that crap up, right? There is no reason to walk around with all of this energy at a cellular level that's not serving in, you know, our higher good. It's not serving our life purpose. <clears throat> and so- the book goes through a lot of modalities and different things that that I experienced along the way and, and with the hope of encouraging others to just dive in there and dig deeper. And I'm sure I'm sure your listeners have been diving in there and digging deeper for a while. So um, even for those veterans, those spiritual veterans, I think there's always a lot to be said for us joining together and sharing our stories. And then the third one is really to shift the narrative around psychedelics. And to be quite honest, I am probably the least likely person one might think um, has anything to do with psychedelics. I've always had an absolute no drug policy um, all my life, even even cannabis. It's just not something, if it showed up somewhere, I was gone. Um, I didn't want to have anything to do with mind altering um, drugs. And so to be in this position now where I'm actually a spokesperson and, and an advocate of plant-based medicines along with other synthetic um, psychedelics. Uh, yeah, it's just fascinating how spirit flows through us and, and inspires us to, to do interesting things. So it's, yeah, anyone that knows me from my pharmaceutical executive days, just is like, I can't believe what you're doing now. And anyone that knows me today is like, uh, I can't believe you were ever a pharmaceutical marketing executive. Like there's just something there. So I think the Gemini in me, I have a lot of fun with that and the dichotomy of like where I've come from and where I am now. And just seeing that beautiful mix of it all spiraling together and now really leveraging my pharmaceutical experience with the psychedelic industry, which is just, yeah, it's just amazing going gangbusters and doing lots of incredible research, as you said, picking up from, you know, what was happening in the sixties and seventies. So yeah, it's a fascinating time right now. And I'm just super excited to be here and participating in it as crazy and chaotic as some days it feels. Yeah, it definitely is. And there's a lot, I mean, I live in Austin and Austin is a hotbed for plant medicine. I mean, you, you probably can't go to any spiritual meeting without meeting somebody who's involved with that. You know, yeah, it's like it everywhere. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I'm somebody who, you know, I've studied down in the jungle, you know, I've been down in the jungle with the masters. I've sat in ceremony with, you know, I mean, just masters, sixth generation, seventh generation shamans and um done ceremony with them and had them teach me things in the middle of an ayahuasca ceremony that was like mind blowing yeah. um from across the room you know because that's how amazing they are with their psych with their psychic skills they don't need to even move they're just showing you things right away and they're paying attention to every single person in the room it's just amazing i don't know how they do that i'm still learning but yeah. it's just kind of fascinating and um you know so i've had amazing stories of my own but, you know, when I started out using um, psychedelics, I was, a, you know, a young person. The first time I ever took mushrooms, I was like 20 um, something with my first partner and we were going to the Grateful Dead, you know, and um, taking mushrooms and going to the Grateful Dead and just rocking out to music. And, and I asked myself the other day, because I've been doing a lot of research into the current, you know, the current psychedelic industry. And I was like, that was kind of a misuse of psychedelics, wasn't it, Carrie? You know, I was asking myself. And then the other part of myself, well, you're just being kind of spiritually arrogant because maybe that did serve me in that time. Like maybe that was what I needed at that age was to have my mind expanded and to have some fun and some joy and some, you know, have myself opened um, up to this kind of new experience of my, my mind, seeing things in the sound and everything. Maybe that was healing all by itself. Yeah. And, you know, and now when I look at the medicine, I look at it much more strategically as like a doorway.
for healing, for really, really deep healing with people, um, to come into their hearts and open up their hearts to cleanse through their body and their cellular tissue and remove old traumas and old wounds, you know, that have been stuck and lodged in there that they don't have conscious access to anymore because, you know, they've, um, scabbed it over with protective layers of defense system, huh. but the medicine opens all that up. So, um, what are your thoughts on that? You know, what are you seeing as the benefit of these medicines for the general collective who maybe never went to a Grateful Dead concert like me and got involved with that, but now are kind of like, I'm not a hippie. I don't know what that is. What's yeah. the, what's the benefit for that person? Who's like, I would have never picked that on my own. Well, I want to touch on that, but if, if you don't mind, you, you've just put out so many really great thoughts and I want to touch on a few other ones first. Um, a discernment comes to mind. You, you were talking about strategic use of them. And I, and I like that. And I think, um, someone like yourself, who's very wise, very embodied, um, discernment is like the first thing that I always want to say about plant-based medicines or psychedelics as a whole, because I do think that it's important to have intentions going in. Um, I think, you know, I, I personally am not, um, for recreational use. Um, simply because, and, and I hear you and I think, I think it's great. Your reflection, it sounds like you still got a lot out of it, but I'm not in it for, and don't advise for recreational use because there is so much that happens. And what I realized is how naive I really am to all the dimensions that are out there. And when we open ourselves up, like, yes, it's great. We open our hearts and we open ourselves and we can see things. Um, but then we start to play in other realms and we come in as naive. And I know you're not naive and you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, that there's a lot that can happen. So I really, really encourage set and setting, setting intentions, um, knowing your server, because there's a lot of playgrounds out there and there's nothing wrong with playgrounds, but there is. And I guess what I mean by that is that um, if you don't know what playground you're on, you can come back with a lot of interesting things. And so the last thing you want to do is go into something hoping for an expansion in consciousness only to come back to this dimension and feel like you're more mixed up um, because you're naive to some of the energies that are at play. So I believe actually that the real journey begins after the journey when you're called to do the integration aspect of psychedelics um, and really do the work here and now in this, this earth plane. And that psychedelics, the thing about them that's so wonderful is that they give us that North star, you know, like that point to hit. They, they help us remember back into source so that we know who we really are, not who we think we are, or who we think we're supposed to be. And it helps us to see through all those illusional veils of of thought constructs and everything that's out there. So absolutely psychedelics, I think can help every single person on the planet, but I don't think that it's for every single person on the planet at every moment in time, because I think everybody needs to really feel called into having this journey so that they can also do the integration aspect of it. But I also don't have a judgment per se against, you know, someone who does it socially, because I do think that it opens people up to different ways, but I think the juice and the learning is in the integration. And so if we don't have that set, um, going into it, it's kind of a free for all and there's a lot of things that can happen. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can talk about this all day long and maybe we will, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, it's I, interesting. Yeah. Cause like, um, I remember one thing that I got from it without it, I, cause I was, completely naive and I had no idea what it was doing or anything. But one thing I got from it when, um, when I was at the Grateful Dead concert one time with it, and I'll never forget it was that I had to go into the, the restroom, which was like this closed in cement building, you know, very dank and dark. Yeah. And as I entered there, I was like, ew, ew, ew. I don't like this. This is not natural. This is like, I had this really repulsed feeling to being in that space. And so I learned in that moment, it's like, oh, like there's a really big difference between nature's structures and human made structures. Oh, okay. But yeah. like, that's a nice insight. And, you know, it stuck with me. But when you go through ceremony with a trained professional, somebody that's been, you know, like one of the, one of the shamans in the jungle or people who have been trained by them, what happens is that you get led so deep inside of yourself that you 
you see the patterns that are like hidden from you in your life. Like you don't realize you're doing certain things. And then yeah. you see it, it's exposed in these ceremonies, but it's exposed with love. Yeah. So that when it's exposed with love, you can maybe feel a little shame about it, but then it's clearly healed very quickly into a new space. So you can open instead of close down on yourself. Right. So it's that kind of masterful holding of space. I would say that there's lots of practitioners learning how to do now holding the space in a really clean way without projecting our stuff on other people. Cause that's another thing that can happen with therapists, whether it's with medicine or not. And this is one of the things I want to go out and talk to the industry about is like, what kind of map are you giving people? Yeah. Are you giving people a disease map or are you giving them a life map? You know, you're giving them the hero's journey. So talk a little bit about, you know, how you, cause I know that plays in, you know, like with training people, how to, how to hold space for this. Yeah. And, and that you touch on a really, um, good point because I feel like because this has become so trendy in some respects in the spiritual community, there's a lot of people who are shamans all of a sudden, and I'm trained and I'm this and I'm that. And if you look at the indigenous people who have used like ayahuasca and, and peyote, I mean, all of these, this is a long lineage of training. This is like through ancestral lineage training. It's not something you pick up and you go and you learn um, through 20 sessions with ayahuasca or sitting, you know, it's, it's something that is really, really sacred. And so I just, you know, I, I, I caution people to just, well, maybe that's not the right word. Cause I feel like that comes a little bit more from, from like a fear-based place. And I'm not saying it out of fear at all. I'm saying it out of complete discernment because it's your soul and you want to be in the presence of other people who have similar intentions. And as I said before, there's entities that can come in um, and entities come in for a lot of the people serving. And so if they don't have that long lineage or they don't have their own, their own community of people that help keep them very clean and clear, um, lots of things can happen. So I don't say it to scare anyone. I say it to just really go deep within and feel into what is the experience that you're looking to have? Because even with ayahuasca, anyone will tell you that serves ayahuasca. It's very important to have an intention going in because otherwise the medicine will take you wherever it wants it it wants to go. And that's not always where you want to go. That's there's, you know, sometimes there's things that you'll learn that you don't necessarily need to know right now on your journey. And so that's where you come in with your free will to say, here's what I'm looking to gain. Here's what I would like to learn. And as you know, going in, we have something in a thought that we say is our intention. Um, and it comes back in whatever way our higher self needs to tell us. And the train is saying yes to that. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that was super loud. Um, so it's uh, it's really setting that intention so that the medicine can hear what it is that you feel you need to hear right now. It goes into that co-creating aspect of, of uh, our life and having free will but really still, still participating. So yes, I think, I think, um, having the right set and setting, um, and with a shaman who's really in the, in, in the medicine knowledge and wisdom is like at the top of my list of, of, of messages, I would say to, to share with others out there. Yeah. And it's a really long path. I mean, I remember one of my first ayahuasca ceremonies, <sighs> I had the spirit of ayahuasca come up to me during the ceremony. She said, so what do you think about this path? And I said, and she showed me how long the path is. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, that looks like a really long path and a lot of hard work. And she's like, it is. She yeah. said, do you want to take it? And I said, you know what? I'll tell you what, I will take the first step. <laughs> so yeah. I signed up for the first step that she recommended for me. But I was like, that is a long path. And yeah. when you look at, like you said, and when I say that, I mean, because that kind of medicine is not in my embodied um, family lineage, you know, so it's um, not something that Celtic people used. Um, mm -hmm. Celtic people maybe were in uh, mushrooms, you know, because mushrooms are all over the whole planet. And so mm -hmm. I have a good relationship with that plant. But yeah, like ayahuasca is a whole nother thing that my particular mm -hmm. ancestral body is like, uh, that's interesting. 
So yeah, the importance of having those, those maestros, you know, those lineage of maestros and to be in study with those maestros over a period of time, you know, like maybe even the rest of your life and following that guidance and not letting yourself get too impatient. You know, I, I can't tell you how many people I've dissuaded from just jumping in and hosting, you know, plant ceremonies for people with no underlying medicine yeah. lineage to support to support their work it's not a good idea in my book either yeah well a, a story comes to mind to share that i think you might find interesting um well and the listeners but for ayahuasca so i had done a couple of different um plant based medicines and and we can talk about that if you're interested in how i got into it but and it kind of came off of being a flower whisperer and understanding the power of flowers and then um resisting uh, the idea because of the hallucinogenic and the lose your mind aspect. And, you know, I was like, I've done all this work. I don't want to, I don't want to lose all the, the work that I've done. And, and then one day I, I had invitations to San Pedro and I had interviewed Louis Schwartzberg, who is um, a famous time-lapse cinematographer and did fantastic fungi and fungi. And he um, encouraged me, if you have the right set and setting, you should definitely try a San Pedro or an ayahuasca and, and of course, psilocybin mushrooms. And so, so that's what got me into it. But fast forward, um, after I, I had done a couple of different ceremonies, um, I had this very profound dream because I was like, ayahuasca, ooh, that seems really that seems really intense. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. And I just didn't feel called to it. But one night I had this really intense dream and I was up on stage, almost like as though I was back in my corporate career. And there was another gentleman that was on stage with me, um, very, very dark skin. We got off the stage and I walked up to him and I said, we need to work together. And he looked at me and he gave me this most intense transmission. And he said, ayahuasca is the way. And I was just, I mean, like my entire body, even though I was in a dreamlike state at that point was very lucid. And I was like, oh, I guess that's my calling. I guess that's my, I guess that's my hit that it's time. So I was very open to doing ayahuasca and had a keen eye for any, you know, any opportunities. And it was, it was at least a year before. And and I had lots of people that came forward, lots of places I could go, but none of them quite resonated for me. And then an opportunity came up and I, I said, okay, this, this, I know the set and setting. I don't know the server. So I, I got on the phone with the server and the shaman who would be, you know, serving it. And, and we had this incredible conversation. I told him that story and he said to me, oh, he said, I'm going to send you a picture. And I want you to tell me if, if this picture looks like the gentleman that you saw. And I apologize that as I sit here right now, I cannot remember this gentleman's name, but he's someone who is like the father of ayahuasca, like known for ayahuasca. And he said, it's very possible that it was him. And I was like, yeah, of course it was him. He was, he was coming to me saying it's time. And so that was um, what called me into that journey and, and then finding the right practitioner. And I just knew, um, you know, when I had that conversation with the server that, that he was the, the person that I was comfortable going into ceremony with, and that we had a similar intention about expanding consciousness and healing. And I had the most amazing, most amazing journey. Um, a, a different time, I had an opportunity to sit with the Huni Queen, which is, um, uh, I don't like really the word famous, but a well, well-respected um, um, shaman um, in the Amazon. And when you, something you had said prompted me to share this story, um, I was, you had said that you were getting messages from across the room. And so I was sitting um, and it felt like I was on sort of a magic carpet and, you know, it's always so difficult to explain in words, like what you actually experience, but, um, they were, they had her and her son who was, um, who was about 21, but he looks like he's 15. He's just, but he's so powerful. You're in the journey and both of them are walking around the room and just like stomping, like, wake up, wake up, wake up. And, and so the energy was just palatable and you were just going into this space. And I had this moment where I had this fear, this deep fear that came in because I thought, oh, I know black magic. I know energies and I know how naive I am, even though I'm really, really educated in many ways. But I, I recognize that naivety in these other realms. And in the moment that I 
that I threw that fear out there almost unknowingly because I'm thinking that I'm having this thought myself, which of course I'm not. And they both flipped around to me in the most powerful way. And they said, we are just here to show you your own power, you know? And it was just like, oh, and then I just, I had all the peace, which passes complete understanding that did keep my heart and mind open. And I went right into the journey then, and there was no more fear about, about that funny business or about like what could be happening. And I knew I was in the right space. And then all the learnings came that were just incredible, profound, and super significant for myself and all of humanity. But yeah, there are those moments where you just realize that from across the room, how interconnected we are in ceremony and bringing that back into this dimension and into this, this plane and knowing that we have an impact on everyone everywhere at all times, that we are all interconnected and that it is about the bliss of divine oneness and it's a it's a way of seeing how we can embody it which is the deeper work that you spoke of right the long the longer journey you know not that we have to come back to this time space reality and say that it has to be difficult or it has to be long and i know you're not saying that but but there's an element of that that's real because we are here in this body in this dimension having this experience that we've called in for our own growth and awakening and, and sometimes it's a lonely journey. Sometimes it's a difficult journey because not everybody else in our life that's close to us is on that same trajectory at the same time. And so that also, I think is a big reason why I felt compelled to share and write the book, because there's a lot of people looking for their tribe, a lot of people looking for um, that community. And sometimes it's hard. And that's also why you do the show. I know it's like, you're here to help bring us all together in that unity and, and helping others feel that love that we have for each other that sometimes we don't get to feel every day out there on the ground, you know, doing our normal lives. Yeah, it's that well, it's a, it's a spectrum. <laughs> on the planet and of understanding, right? Uh, different yeah. understandings about life. And so, you know, as we're, as we wake up more, as they were saying, wake up, wake up to your own power. I mean, that's what we're here to do is wake everybody up to their power Yeah, because it's only from power within that we're going to change the planet. And that's what the plants, you know, these waves of plants coming forward saying, we have medicine for you. We have medicine for you. And that call that you feel to engage in that medicine is, you know, that's part of the wake up journey that humanity is on right now. Um, yeah. The plants have lots to teach us. I was in one ceremony with the plants where he was, the shaman was calling in all the plants because we do dieta, right? So I did tobacco yeah. dieta. I drank tobacco for 10 days um, and had ayahuasca. That was intense. Um, you know, so he's calling in all the plants and uh, we're on ayahuasca. So my senses are open and I'm just feeling that these plants come from different worlds actually. Yeah. And so like I'm with this plant and their energy comes in and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a completely different world. Wow. That's really interesting. That world, you know, like yeah. checking out what that world is like as it's yeah. glugging down through my energy field and I'm feeling a little queasy because that energy yeah. is new to me. Right. And, and then the next plant comes in and I'm like, oh, that's a very different plant. So it was just so interesting to realize that, that these are cosmic plants, like their consciousness yes. that is on the earth to support us in, you know, understanding ourselves in a multidimensional way um, yeah. and then get healing multidimensionally too. So these plant ceremonies are not like you're just sitting in a room. No. You need somebody that can guide you multidimensionally safely yeah. through all of that yourself, you know, yeah. and, and, and like, again, it's like, oh, I want to create fear around things. But, you know, as one of my teachers, um, Alberto Vialdo used to say, he's like, there's a lot of things in the universe, you know, and some things would like to have a snack and yeah. you're the snack. So yeah. if you don't want to be something snack, you've got to claim your own power and be, yeah able to, you know, discern what's good for me, what's not good for me, what's mine, what's not mine, and your yeah. free will. And that's part of the process of inner medicine. If I can add to that about your analogy of being a snack, I mean, I think 
there's a lot of entities that want to have a voice and that they want to experience things here on, on the earth plane and they want to come back with you and, or they want to have an impact with you. And so again, that's where that discernment comes in to really be asking for your highest good, your, your, your highest vibrational lessons that you're here to learn now, because otherwise you can get sidetracked and be someone's snack, if you will. Um, because they they want to be heard but the, the the maybe the other side of that too is the fun part is that depending upon where you are in your journey and your acknowledgement and i'm saying that to to the listeners more so than than you but um it, there's there's also because of this opening and because you can transcend and because the default mode network of the ego mind the human ego mind is is quieted and shut down you can also be very much in touch with your starseed origins, um, you know, where you've come from. Um, and, and that's also very helpful because you can get a lot of interesting information that helps you understand your template of, of you here in this body. And so that's really fun and fascinating. But even then, um, I always have just, and I'm not saying this needs to be everyone else's um, methodology going into medicine, but it's certainly mine that I always ask for the North Star. I always go to the, the highest, whitest, bright light to the Godhead and and start there and then ask for anything that I need to see coming back down through all the dimensions. Because I've also noticed that there's a lot of times that there's a lot of open doors along the way. So if you're kind of slowly journeying up through all the different doors, and again, I'm not making you know statements that, that everyone should do it this way. I'm just saying this is a way that works for me. But I've noticed that if you're going up through the dimensions, there's a lot of fun doors and a lot of fun avenues to go into, but we never quite know where the intention are is of all of those other um uh yeah all those other entities and dimensions and spirits that that lie there so um it might might be fun but it might not be for your highest good and so um yeah i just think that people need to have a general understanding of what am i doing the medicine for you know is it for my spiritual healing or is it to be entertained and um and it's the, as we've said, the integration work, right? When we when we come back, because otherwise, if we're just doing psychedelics, I, I feel very strongly that if we're doing psychedelics to just go out there um, and we're not doing the work when we're back here, then we're not embodying the lessons. And then at that point, we're just doing drugs. Then you're just you're just escaping to go out and to have a different experience, but you're not actually incorporating and integrating. And then there's a, a respect and a sacredness that gets broken um with the plants and and with the medicines and and with your own free will and with your own mind and and then that kind of gets into some other areas that um i think aren't as productive and aren't as much fun on the awakening spiritual journey but some people clearly have called that in um to have those experiences as well um here on the earth plane so yeah i don't think that there's any accidents necessarily i'm just saying you know if we're really looking to transcend and bring oneness down here on planet earth and bring heaven on earth. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a knowledge level. So I think it just goes back to the points that you've made already. And, and, and I've said is just finding that right set and setting and finding the sacred spaces. Cause as you experienced in that bathroom and understanding the difference between concrete, there are different energies that exist within different spaces. Yeah. With different intentions. So it's fascinating. Yeah, it's uh, really fascinating. You know, and some people are concerned about the use of um, psychedelics and being addictive. And I would say if, if it's being used in a medicinal way, like in a healing way, usually not because like it can be hard if you're in a two night ceremony and you just had a powerful night to like yeah. go into the next night and say, yes, I'm going to take this because you might just be like, I just don't want to. But I always recommend that people, you know, whether it's a two night ceremony, whether it's a week ceremony, whether it's just energy medicine and a mystery school for six months or a year that you sign up for, whatever it is that you say yes to, you got to keep your word and you got to go through the process because it's a process. And like, for example, a lot of people will say, well, it's a two night ceremony, so I'm going to go both nights, but then after night one, they don't want to anymore. Well, the medicine's already planned for you to be there two nights. 
Yeah. So even if you think you're going home and not doing the work that second night, oh yes, you are. Even the medicines in you, you are doing the work the next night. Uh, so it's just kind of realizing that there's, there's just your intention, like you were saying is everything. And we've got to stick to our commitments. And that means even after the work is done, right? It's like, after the experience is over, you've, you've got to do the daily practices and the spiritual discipline in order to bring that into your life and actually shift your own consciousness. Cause the plant's not here to do it for you. The plant is only here to show you what's possible, what you can achieve and then you have to do it yeah. using that as your tether. You know, it's like, okay, that's right. That was my, that was my heart wide open and so much love for people. Okay. I got to get back to that yeah. space. Right. Well, and I think for me, one of the things that I feel so grateful for is that I had, and I speak about this, you know, throughout the entire book, the journey and all of the spiritual tools that I got into my, into my toolbox prior to doing any medicine. So I was able to have incredible journeys, not psychedelic based, um, you know, being in energy and in different vortexes and, and, and really understanding energies from a different perspective before having the more, I don't mean aggressive in a negative way, but I mean, in a more like catapulting way with medicines. Um, so that I think helped create a bridge, um, for me. And I, I encourage people to create that bridge possibly prior to medicine or to have a real commitment, um, as you said, after, because it's, it's, you want to build that bridge strong because that's your foundation of, of, this world versus other worlds and other dimensions. And so in the book, I talk about a lot of different modalities and methods and tools and things that, that I came across because I lived in Bali for five and a half years, Asia um, for you know seven. So it was, it was actually a significant um, time period of my life. And, and I learned so much that we don't get exposed to here in the Western world, you know, even things like black magic and um, energy work at a totally different level. And so, yeah, I really encourage people to have fun with building the toolbox. It can be challenging to do some of the work, but once we do the work and we blow up all that crap that's been sitting in there, and sometimes it's not even ours, like sometimes it's our ancestral stuff, sometimes it's from our mother and father. Um, so I talk about all that in the book and, and how I was able to get exposed to it and see things differently from another lens and perspective and and really tap into my own inner wisdom in a, in a much deeper, more profound way. And that's, that's all we're called to do is just, as you said in your intro, know who we really are. Yeah. Remember who we really are in truth. You know, I love all this. I do want to just, in the last few minutes, we have just touch on the herpes conversation yeah. <clears throat> just a little, because it's in the title and I want people to feel like, you know, I really wanted some input on that. Please give me some, because I know that when I was really deep in my own trauma with that particular virus, um, you know, I just felt so much and I wanted to heal myself of it. And I had to decide that it was possible to heal myself of it and, and how to be in relationship with it. It was like changing the lens that I was looking at it through yeah. from it's happening to me to it's happening for me, through me, for something really good for me to understand about myself. What I know what I realized about it, but what did you realize about um, this herpes experience? Well, I realized a lot. Um, one of the reasons why it's in the title is that Spirit told me it needed to be in the title. Um, I had many different versions of the book. Um, one, the first version, I was just I was just talking about being exposed to it. And then Spirit said, no, 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 you need to go a little bit deeper on it. And in the middle of COVID, I realized that everyone would understand virus shame because COVID brought that forward for us to understand. And then I realized, oh, even though I'm not suffering from this virus anymore, so many other people are, whether they have it or they have a partner that has it, or they were someone who inflicted suffering onto someone else because they rejected someone and, and in the way that they rejected someone really hurt someone. So the trauma of herpes is it's not even so much about the actual outcome of it, but it's the trauma of getting it. It's the trauma of having to have those conversations around it. It's the trauma of feeling like damaged goods. It's the trauma of, yeah, just feeling like 
an aspect of your, your freedom is taken away that can cause so much cellular trauma. And it just is a, a testament to say, whatever your trauma is, whether it's herpes or it's abandonment or it's sexual abuse or, you know, whatever we can, the list is long. It's time to wake up and release this trauma because it's not serving anyone. And it's also, I think that that whole thing around secrets, you know, feeling like it's, it's a secret. And I can't tell you how many people have come up to me, pulled me aside and said, you know, after a book conversation and said, do you have herpes? You know, I have herpes and, and I haven't been able to tell anyone. And, 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 you know, and like that secretivism of it um, creates an energy that gives it power. Just like COVID, like we saw how that virus had so much power and it leads me to the main topic, which is the viruses of the mind, right? And how, when we heal, and you started to touch on this with your own story, that when we start healing the lens of how we see something, then everything can change. And when, when the herpes virus itself doesn't have that power and significance and you start transforming it for me, I started to realize, oh, if I think or feel that I might be getting an outbreak, my body is too acidic. I need to go alkaline, you know? And it was like, oh, thank you. Thank you for this great message. Thank you for helping me to know that, that there's an imbalance in my body. And so of course there's lots of ways and uh, to heal and to, to cure against herpes. I think it's for every person. I actually feel that, and maybe you have a different feeling. I'd like to hear your thoughts, but I think it's very individualized because I think we bring in experiences, you know, viruses to, to help us heal on a much bigger spiritual way. And so for each person, it might be a little bit different. So how they go about healing it might be different. So if you don't believe in herbs and natural, natural medicines that might not, might heal a lot of other people, but it might not heal you because <laughs> you, you might not have that, that, that real understanding of how the power of clearing and cleansing our body of viruses can take place. And so um, I don't necessarily know or believe that there's a one size fits all, but maybe you found one that that is a one size fits all for everyone. But again, I think it's just so personal to to everyone's journey. Um, so I'm curious to hear if you if you have something that that you feel is a, a one size fits all for everyone. Well, I'm not sure if it is, but I can say I love what you talked to. You brought in COVID because yeah, it was like, it was that same energy of like, oh, you're so dirty. You have COVID stay away from me, you know, like that kind of energy. And I used to feel that when I, um, you know, when I left my former partner um, and I was out on my own for the first time in 20 years, right. I had to face this because yeah. I met him right after I caught it and he decided he didn't care. He was going to be with me anyway. But then after 20 years, he said the same thing as you. He's like, we can't go, we can't separate from each other we have, we're damaged goods. And I was like, but our marriage is like not healthy. Like, and we can't seem to make it healthy. This isn't good yeah. for our family. So we're just going to have to face that then. And we, we both went our own ways to face that. But my, um, my feeling about it was that for me, when I turned to herpes as my teacher and I yeah. said, what are you trying to teach me? And what I got was, that I needed to see how I undervalued myself, that I, I had this shadow part of me that felt really worthless mm -hmm. and that I was seeking attention from men to be validated in my worth and that to be validated sexually in my worth. And so when I was really low down at the end of that marriage, where I was just so devastated in myself and feeling really worthless, having nightmares, waking up, I talk about this all in the book, Awakening to Me. And I talk about some of the rejections that I got that really broke my heart. I mean, just stabbed me right through the heart that, that I would be rejected because of this one thing. Um, it was, it was very painful. And the other big part of that, that came through for me was that I was not having boundaries. And I think it's all related to this conversation, but I wasn't having boundaries with protecting and validating myself and honoring myself that I wasn't honoring my body. I wasn't honoring my divine feminine. I wasn't, I was just throwing it out there to anybody who would have some and just mm -hmm. trying to get a little meager portion of attention. And yeah. if you read Awakening to Me, those people who have read it, they're like, oh my God, Carrie, it's like a horror story. It's like, don't go in the haunted house again. Don't go in the haunted house. Oh, she just went in again. Oh, dang yeah. it. Well, she stopped doing that. And it's like, so I, it helps you to see the repeating pattern thing and yeah. through my lens. 
Um, but yeah, so the way I healed it was really turning and honoring myself and calling on my ancestors, particularly my Cherokee ancestors and saying, cause that was a culture where the women were very highly regarded and highly honored and respected, which yeah. is not what's happening in Western culture up until now. And we're doing our best to shift that paradigm. But um, my Cherokee ancestors had a lot to teach me about honoring the feminine, honoring my vessel, honoring my womb as a, a, an example of mother nature, of divine yeah. mother. And as I called in that energy of healing, um, it just went away. So, yeah. I mean, I hasn't come back in years. I mean, like it's been, yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Because I don't need that lesson anymore. You know, like I honoring myself now and that's what it was for me. But like you said, it could be a lesson for anybody just like COVID. Um, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to get it. I was like, I'm not going to get COVID. That's not my lesson. You know, I'm uh, that's not my lesson. And I never got it. I didn't get it until last January. And that was after I said to spirit, I said, you know what, if I have to get this to avoid trouble, you know, cause I don't want to take the vaccine. Um, just give it to me then. I'll just be done with it. And I got it like two days later. (laughs) So like, but I didn't get it until I said, yes, a fine, I'll just do it and get it over with, you know, but it was more from exasperation with this, you know, the fear climate and not wanting to put something in my body that I don't want to have in my body. But yeah, yeah, it's like, I knew that wasn't for me. That's not my lesson. I I have already had those kinds of lessons with other viruses is not my lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I've, I've said that I feel like the herpes, thing for me was herpes saved my life. Um, actually for me, that's one of the, it was, I was in a very bad situation, um, sleeping with the devil. And it was the one thing that saved my life that got me out, uh, immediately. And you have to read the book to find out the trauma behind how that all went down. But yeah, so, so it was, it was a real, um, blessing for me in such an interesting way to hear me, you know, to hear, hear someone say that about herpes, but and I so appreciate you asking about it because I can't tell you how many, how many shows I've been on and people really skirt around mm-hmm. the word. And it's like, I'm so surprised you guys are not asking me. This is like, you know, this is, it's this is available for conversation. It's because yeah. it, it pings on that lowest rung of the force matrix, which, yeah. you know, if you look at power versus force and David Hawkins work, yeah. It's that lowest rung of shame and anything that pings on that rung, people don't want to talk about, right? They just avoid it, avert their eyes. Like I can't talk about this, but that's actually where you got to go. I mean, if you really want to be free, you got to go down there and be with those feelings. You know, you have to hang out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's such a, it's such a great lesson and, and on so many ways. And, and just to kind of touch on one more thing about that is, you know, the viruses of the mind, right? So it, whatever that is for people that the, the devil lies there in, in everyone for everything, it's always in the ideas of the mind. And so, you know, whether it's a, an actual virus of, of COVID or whatever, it's, it's dissolving the fear around that idea that's coming forward. And so I just think it's such an incredible topic. We could have a whole a whole show just talking about that. But yeah, it's it's a it's a great time to do the work. It's a, it's an incredible time right now. As as crazy and chaotic as it is and feels and the ups and the downs, um, it's just a beautiful time because the message is so clear. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. You, you know what? The one way to wake up is to notice where you're triggered, right? And so any place to trigger and, and then that feeling of shame or yeah. guilt or judgment or blame, like it dive into that place and yeah. bring some awareness, oh, right? And like feel yeah. all the feels, dissect it, what's going on, and then peel that back with love, you know, and, and hold that part, embrace that part, not avoid that part and shame it and put it back in the closet where everything else is. That closet is, that closet is too full, people. It yeah. is, it is bursting at the seams and we know we've got to turn and face that stuff now and you've got safe places to do it you've got wonderful guys like beth bell and you've got communities where you can go and get support you've got this whole industry opening up this psychedelic pharmaceutical experience for you so that it's safe and reliable and you've got trained people so like you know let's just trust a little that all of this is orchestrated right on time for us collectively and you know take the opportunity to be held and supported as you face some deep dark stuff 
within yeah. yourself. Yeah. And, and on that note, if I can just mention two other things that I think are really helpful in community is um, because I didn't know where everyone is going to be. That's a reader on the journey. I put together another book that's a supplementary book to angels, herpes, and psychedelics, and it's called the awakening and healing handbook. Um, it's on my website, bethbell.me. And what it does is it goes into a lot of definitions. Some of it's spirituality 101, some of it's more complicated topics and ideas, but because in the book, there's stories, it's not a how-to guide and, and the awakening handbook isn't a how-to guide either, but it provides a lot more information on how to, and it's sort of a pick and choose, you know, like what resonates for me. And there's different discussions about different modalities, um, and resources. I've got lots of resources in there. And one of the things that, um, that I think it's a great resource in there that, that I'm going to bolster is, is around herpes. I was going to do that somewhere else, but you know, I think it just makes a lot of sense to put it in the awakening and healing handbook to put a lot of resources for healing, um, healing herpes itself. So that's one thing. And then another thing is, is there's something called the bliss book club, which is in development right now, because what I recognized through a lot of readers that have given incredible comments on Amazon, people who have talked to me in person and they've said, Oh, it's, it has been inspiring. I want to go deeper in the journey, but I read the book so fast because I wanted to, I wanted to hear your stories that now that I've finished the book, I'm scared that I'm going to just go back to my normal life because we know that C word is difficult change. It's really hard to change without a community. So it's inspired me to do the bliss book club where you can sign up and, and we, we have a VIP group that talked more in depth about storylines in the book, but also modalities and, and, and lots of juicy nuggets. And then there's also going to be a live um, opportunity to come to a live session uh, on YouTube on my Beth Bell live channel. So that's all in development and will soon be available to people so that they, if they do have questions and they do want answers um, around maybe just fun questions around the book, not so fun questions around the book, or that eventually um, they want to come and ask questions about their own life. This is what's happening. How do I transform it? Um, that'll all take place on Beth Bell Live. So it's just a fun way to have a great way to have community um, and a platform where people can come and ask questions about their own life and feel supported on their own journey. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. So juicy. So, well, um, that is gorgeous. Now, did you have, um, any place you wanted people to start? You just want people to go to Beth Bell live. Is that the place you would like them to I go? I think bethbell.me is the best place to go. You'll, okay. you'll see about the book. Um, there's lots of resources on the page. There's yeah, there's you'll, you'll, you'll get sort of everything on there. You can shop if you want, you know, necklaces, the mini mantra word bar necklaces that are all blessed and made in Bali. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of fun stuff on the site, different books, um, materials, the awakening and healing handbook, um, you know, the five pearls of wisdom workbook and, and yeah, and we'd love to be in touch with everyone. So if you give us your email, we'll give you the first two chapters free. You can listen to it on audio or, or, um, or get, we also send them on a PDF. So yeah, so there's lots of ways to connect and, and just stay connected in community and, and to help each other, you know, and shining the light and showing the way. And that's really what we're here to do. That's beautiful. So I'll give you guys those links, everybody. Go ahead and sign up and get that those free gifts and offers from Beth. And that's gorgeous. I just want to honor you for your journey and your transparency and vulnerability, Beth. It's just been a beautiful conversation as usual. Totally yeah. rely on you for that. Um, and everybody out there, you know, like, share, subscribe, share this out with anybody that you know that's going through these experiences or would like more information. Um, it's just a way to be really sane through these conversations on this time in the planet and to get the most out of the experiences that you're entering into. So thank you so much for sharing it out to people. And now we're going to give you kisses. So here come your kisses, everybody. We love you. And here's a proof. Here's kisses. Mm. Okay, everyone. We'll see you next week on Soul Nectar Show. Bye for now. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show, will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now.
To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. Take a sip from the drip of nectar From the source of who you are